So one thing we absolutely love doing while RVing is staying with locals and getting to know locals. Uh, it's been especially awesome in Alaska. So we're here with Jennifer and her uh, dog Max and her cat Willow. Jennifer has uh, given us a unique um, Alaskan experience of letting us walk around some great salmon fishing just down the road with the creek. Uh, she made us some sun tea. Uh, with some stuff she has here locally. We had some moose burgers. And turns out Jennifer has another local friend that has like a uh, dog sledding business, which right now dog sledding is not in, but they'll still have in the, you know, if you're in Alaska or other areas that have dog sledding, they'll have where the dogs can pull like a uh, cart kind of deal. So I don't know how that's gonna work today with the rain, but we're gonna check it out, see what we can do. Hensley's super pumped. You pumped, Hensley? You gonna go see some dogs? She's, even, she's got hers ready. Here. You even got Pixie, huh? Cool. <laughs> is this Jennifer? This is her coffee mug. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> You've been here how many years? Five and a half years. Five and a half. Oh, that's yeah. yours. Not yours. That's where you go. <laughs> Straight stuff out. Coffee coffee mug. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they're excited to see you, Hensley. They want to give you a ride. So along the way, somebody has told Hensley that Alaska has dogs. <laughs> and so she's been talking the whole time about wanting to go see the dogs. So what's really cool is Alaska has this huge race called the Iditarod where they train like a year to take a team of dogs through about a thousand miles through Alaska every March. It's kind of like the Super Bowl of dog sled <laughs> trails. So they, they train and they prep year round. And so in the summer you can come and take some cart rides. So we're gonna check out one for Hensley to ride. So they told us in National Park what this is. They're all saying, pick me, pick me. <laughs> they really wanna get out and run. That's a bigger cart than I imagined. It's 17 feet long. That's awesome. So what are all the, the different roles? Like your your. So we have back here are the wheel dogs. Okay. Which are the ones closest to the sled. And if you have good wheel dogs, then they help drive the sled. Okay. Like they also know the commands. Like when I ran, I did rod. I had I think I had some of the world's best wheel dogs. If I said G, which is right, they would pull the sled to the left. So they would pull me around instead of into the corner, they would help pull around, okay. which makes it really nice. And then we've got, you know, in the middle is basically team position. The lead dogs are the brains of the operation. Basically it's calming voice to get them to stop or slow down. So, yeah. whoa, you don't want to start screaming whoa, because that gets them all excited. They respond to your excitement. So like uh, if you get to a real crazy part of the trail and you're like freaking out a little bit and you <laughs> you start screaming or they'll go faster. They'll pick up on that. They'll be like, oh, you're having fun back there. They don't know what you're saying. Oh, stop, stop, please stop. Ready? Ready? Dickory's like, I'm ready to go back to my house and get <laughs> but the, you They did the good, big, yeah. Dickory's 11 years old, that big black dog right there. <laughs> retired, he's so retired, so he's <laughs> like, yeah, that's kind of warm for me. <laughs> so it's around $60,000 to race out in a rod, um, which not just anybody can hop on there and do that either. You've got to spend all the time raising the money, and, and you have to have previously raced, I think they said like a 300 mile or 100 miler and a 200 mile. Anyways, you have to have a few more races under your belt before you could even do it. And someone has to vouch for you. And so basically like, you can't get anybody to vouch for you because they think they're, you're gonna die on the trail. <laughs> then you can't get in.
<laughs> so we've headed south from Willow uh, down to Wasilla, which is like an hour-ish from Anchorage. This is a city park. Of course, the big score, well, two big scores. One is this playground, like we're <laughs> right next to it. A uh, second big score, electric. No water, no sewer. I hate to see this, but this is like, this could be a super nice park, and maybe it was at one point. It's definitely started to be like overgrown, and you've got, I don't even know, know what's up with the yellow caution tape but there's yellow caution tape in several places that is still around the trees and this does make the mosquitoes a bit worse when things are overgrown like this but to us the pros outweigh the cons is 10 bucks a night no hookups 20 bucks with electric and the biggest thing is you're like within minutes like 10 minutes of walmart and stuff like that in wasilla we ran back into doug what's up doug <laughs> stalking you a little bit <laughs> and we didn't know this, but this actually fixed in with the dog sledding stuff. The Iditarod uh, Trail headquarters is here. So we're gonna check that out. So we made it here, but I don't know that we timed it very well. <laughs> Two tour buses just showed up. We'll see how this goes. Had to slip out of there. <laughs> so that place is not meant to hold two full tour bus. Really neat, a lot of history on dinner. Odd Rod, they have a movie going on, which I could not fit in the room where they're watching the movie. Um, of course, lots of souvenirs, all that kind of thing. Um, they explain the race and all that if you're interested in the history of it. They usually have the dogs here and you can do like a little ride for 10 bucks uh, with the dogs, but she said it was too wet, too mushy, so they're not even getting the dogs out. So the dogs aren't even here today, which is kind of a bummer. So, so if you're interested in the trail, I think this is an awesome place to stop but just don't come around 10 o'clock and on a super rainy day. Did you watch a movie? Uh-huh. Was it good? Uh-huh. What was it about? It was about dogs. <laughs> yeah? No, it was very informative because it can get controversial about the dogs racing. And I think it did a good job explaining how well taken care of they are and how excited the dogs are to race and they spend their whole lives preparing for this. Like, marathon runners. Yeah, I think everything we've seen backs that up. The dogs are crazy excited to get, get yeah. on out there. We, when I first heard them barking, I thought, oh, you know, they're not happy or something's wrong, but they just get, because once they hitch all the dogs up, they they all go silent. They know, okay, well, I'm not going to get in. They want to be picked They're like, pick me, pick me. They're bred to run. That's mm -hmm. that's what they're bred for. There are some Iditarod movies. We watched the Iron Will, which I think is one of the better dog sledding movies. <laughs> it's, it's not, not about, it's, it's not about Iditarod. Iditarod, but it's a dog sledding movie. So as long as you're not like the Russian on there with a the whip, <laughs> which nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> Nature's fury and man's greed. <laughs> yeah, cool movie though. If you want a dog sledding movie, that was one of my favorites growing up. I love that one. Balto is also a really good movie. Got you in the racing mood, hasn't it? This is pretty epic up here. I love places we go where it feels like we're like in another country or another planet sometimes. Uh, this is beautiful. And I mean, it's cloudy and we can hardly see anything. It's still just epic. Look at this mist rolling off the mountains. Not exactly ideal hiking weather, but uh, it's still awesome. We're here to check out the mine though today. <laughs> She's Woo! so cold. It's beautiful. It so is. So beautiful. It is. So far we've seen two different places you could park your RV if you wanted to. One is not bad at all. Like I would feel comfortable bringing pretty much any RV to the first spot. And then there's a second one we saw that had even better views, but it's, you got an eight, 10% grade for probably a mile or something to get to it. So it's a little bit of a drive to get to it. But if you want to get up here in this area, 
This Easy is one of those places that the locals have recommended over mm -hmm. and over yes. and over. So we're excited to do a little bit of exploring. We'll have to break it up a little bit. But we're hoping, yeah, today's gonna be the mine. We're hoping optimistically we can come back and show you guys some of these mountains because we've heard it's epic and some of the hikes are epic up here. Mm -hmm. um, but still, just, just the drive today and what we've seen. The locals know what they're doing. <laughs> the locals are just awesome. Now, Doug said there wasn't that much of an elevation change, but I can definitely tell it's dropped 10 or 20 degrees up here. It's it's colder for sure. And it's drizzly, so I think we got all of our bases covered. Uh, we did layer up this time at least. Somebody's keeping their Dr. Pepper cold over there. Yeah. It's, not. <laughs> it's a, a cooler. Marissa. <laughs> no, I mean, it's cold, but it's not like. No, it's cold. <laughs> Marissa's asking if this is an inside tour. <laughs> Mines are inside, right? So this is the manager's house we just checked out. And this is all the other mine stuff. Is that the very technical word? Mine stuff. Mine stuff. <laughs> it's yeah. a big area. It's bigger than I expected. But they do have tours that leave at certain times to go check out certain things. But we missed those. And I don't know if it really matter because tours with our kid don't seem to last super long anyways. She marches to the beta of her own drum. Yeah. So we're gonna do our uh, self-guided tour with our group. Yeah. This is like a combination of, could you imagine how creepy this would be if it ever did get dark here? <laughs> if it <laughs> it will get dark. See? Come out here at 2 a.m. <laughs> they had to have filmed some movies here. Something. I mean, this is just way too cool to not yeah. have done something here. Oh, Dad, look, I mean, at look at that. Water running. Yeah. Look at the gold pan. There's a bunkhouse. Okay, so framing shops here. All right. What year is all this? 1938, I think, to 1941. That door's uh, had a rough time. Yeah, it's had better days. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very tiny school. So just a whole community, right? Not just like yeah, people I guess. came up here to work. I mean, they lived up here. And yeah, they had school for their kids and yeah. bunk rooms. So as you know, the rain seems to follow us around. But sometimes it's really cool getting the experience of seeing all the, the smoke on the mountain and the fog on the mountain. I don't know, that's especially with this backdrop of all the history around us, it actually sets a really cool setting. I don't know, it just makes it kind of mystical, kind of mysterious. This is beautiful here. What do you see? I see a waterfall. You see a waterfall? Yeah. You like your ride, Hensley? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's Mama Mule doing? Pretty good? I'm gonna hear it if I'm not. <laughs> I offered to carry her. It means I get to eat more later, right? More tacos. We're heading right up there. You just hair want to offer or just, oh, your hair? Yeah. Thanks. So pretty. It is. I feel like we're in another country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It feels so green and I don't know, just being in the mountains with all the fog. It's Switzerland or something? Yeah, or something. and the historical yeah. buildings. Like it just feels like another country. It's so cool. It's neat that sometimes you're here and you're just checking out nature on its own, which is awesome. But then when you get history sort of blended in with the mountains here, it's really cool. 1940? Yeah. I'm actually in the mine with this. So cool. The 
but I know where she's heading. <laughs> <laughs> he got a run and start. Good job, Hensley. Good job, Hawkins. Yeah. Are you so worried about me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I trusted you because James was taking care of you. He did a good job helping you, didn't he? So hatch your pass. Wow, that was incredible. Yeah, um, it was weird. beautiful. Are you excited for Uncle Corey coming? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you excited? I am. You get to do some guy stuff. I am. Some, I know uh, some man stuff. somebody said they turned on a video one time and he was in the video and they were totally confused that I guess I suddenly got better looking and <laughs> <laughs> he's my better looking younger brother. So yeah, I don't like that part that I'll all of a sudden be the uh, ugliest brother. That's not true. You're beautiful. <laughs> By default, I'm the best looking one right now yeah so pretty pumped for him to come in and... we always love family coming and staying with us we actually have um a couple of family members wanting to come out and visit us while we're in alaska all of a sudden when you come to alaska everybody wants to come visit so <laughs> um, <laughs> it'll be fun but it's good to have family come in but it's also really cool to get to hang out with locals talk to locals and hatcher pass was definitely something highly recommended by locals mm -hmm. um, listen to your locals they, yes yes they make connections know, talk yeah. great area it's been a great spot and, uh, but we're moving south to Anchorage, getting my brother, and then we're gonna keep bouncing around down there a little bit and see what we're gonna do. Um, not necessarily Anchorage, but we're gonna bounce around south of Anchorage, I guess, mainly um, checking out some of that area. There's so much to see and do. This is an awesome yeah. area of Alaska, so looking forward to checking it out. We're gonna hang out with Hensley a little bit more. The monkey did something magic. The monkey did something magic. Are you a monkey? <laughs> we're gonna watch our monkey. We're gonna watch our monkey, <laughs> and we will catch you guys later.